Today we are doing the Mermaid Challenge. It's a month-long drawing challenge where you draw a mermaid every day based on a prompt. We have drawn mermaids on this channel before. We had Ariel the Little Magic Harp and then we had Morgan's Magic Tribe. I like that name. I feel like we're being entirely too much digital. So I brought in some of my acrylic gouache from home, um, which is different to normal gouache. But that's I really thought video. you were going the direction of watercolor. No, no. Uh, all right, so let's look at some of the prompts then. Yeah, in the spirit of the challenge, I think we should do today today's prompt. prompt. So today, the 17th is... Uh, emotion. Emotion. We'll make it work. That, that, that is the challenge. Leave it with us. <laughs> so emotion was an interesting prompt. It's fair to guess that most people, when we think about emotion, we automatically jump to facial expressions mm. for obvious reasons. Mm. So I decided to challenge myself to see how much emotion I could fit into a piece, how much emotion I could evoke mm -hmm. without showing faces. That's a great idea. Because then it becomes about body language. Body language. Body language! <laughs> Lighting, composition, and story. And color palette. Since we here on this channel tend to like ruin every mermaid we draw, <laughs> I decided I was going to go with a tragic scene. That would kind of like hit people on a gut level. Mm. I'm just gonna go ahead and give the spoiler. This is a mama mermaid who's been found dead by her husband and her kids. They've probably been searching for her for a while. And I don't add this until the end, but she's basically been caught in fishermen's nets. Alicia walked into the room at one point, and when I told her my plan to eventually like put a bunch of rope in the picture, she was like, we have a brush for that. And I'm so glad she told me that because it saved me so much time. So in Jazza's brush pack, under the same set where there's like chain links and stuff, there is a rope brush and here's how I used it. And what I was thinking of was, growing up, I was always so saddened to hear that dolphins would get trapped in trolling mm, nets. Mm. Well, I love animals, and it was just horrific to me that you would get dragged underwater. And even though you're a sea creature, you could still drown. Yeah. So that's what's happened to her. And last week, I was talking about how I was trying to make my workflow more efficient. Like if I was doing a painterly picture, yes. I would go in without lines just to save time. But with this one, there were so many elements to balance. Like I just had to do lines because I, I shifted the uh, characters around so much. I knew I wanted the vignette to not be like a circle or a square. So mm -hmm. I purposely made it like triangular. Mm -hmm. In terms of setting the mood, I knew that I didn't want your typical sunny beach where, you know, the sand is a bright beige and the water is a bright blue. I was going for like that really brackish water. So mm. it's more towards gray. Like any hint of color is really subdued. Yeah. When I was envisioning this image, the only thing I knew for sure with the colors is that I knew I wanted her tail to be golden. Yeah. And for some reason, I knew that he was a redhead. With her tail, the reason I went for gold is because it's such a beautiful, vibrant color. And it's, you know, it's like godly and go gold is meant to be good things, mm. which makes the contrast of her being dead all the more cruel. I think you're also, you've definitely got some um, color theory happening in your head without you thinking about it. So the brackish blue you've picked, the opposite on the color wheel is the, the gold color that you've picked. And so it then makes the eye be drawn straight to her. And same with all the other colors you've picked in this artwork. So I think you're naturally using color theory without actually thinking about the color Ooh, theory. Thanks yeah. for pointing that out. <laughs> yeah, great. Honorable mention, Ash is down here. I just want to say that I was kind of like channeling his energy when I drew the like the little fat oh, baby. Oh no! <laughs> I was gonna say like, why you do this? You've got like a little redhead boy, a little blonde girl. My daughter's oh, blonde. That... <laughs> oh no! I'm... Why have you done oh, this? I... Going into this one, I did have a bit more of a game plan. Mm. So let's establish the composition, the position of the characters, and I was like, we're gonna put in the base colors for characters. Then I'll do a shadow pass, then a lighting pass. Positioning the four characters was a bit of a challenge because they all needed to be interacting with each other in a certain way. Mm. And at the same time, they had to be positioned so that each of their silhouettes could still be clearly readable. Yes. Mermaids are very bendy, obviously. That's why they're so fun. Yeah. So I was trying to make sure that her torso, then her midsection, and then her tail all kind of face in slightly different directions. Mm -mm. Same with the, the kids and the, the husband. Here we've got four torsos, four tails and I didn't want anything to be too repetitive. So just trying to yeah. pose them all differently. I made sure to like really arch his upper back because mm. not only is he kind of like holding her and supporting a bit of that weight, but it's the bow of grief. Well, yeah, I was gonna say, you're, again, we're talking about body language. Yeah. 
you've done a really good job. It's that intense, intense grieving mm. where you're like this. It's not just like a, a mild sadness. Oh, what a shame. <laughs> I'll have to get a new wife then. You're more fish in the sea. <laughs> no. Yeah, with this piece, there were several challenges. There were things that I'm just not accustomed to drawing. I don't really have a efficient process for drawing rocks or just beaches in general without making it look like a cliche beach. Mm. So I, I did pull in reference for that one. And then to draw things that are half sitting in water as well. So there were a lot yeah. of things here that were a bit experimental. I think you've done really well with how you sort of depicted the water. Like, I, d I don't know how I would have done it. I wanted that melancholy feel of the shallow, gentle waves just kind of washing up and down. Mm -mm. And like, that's like almost the only movement you have in that scene because everyone's yeah. just so wrapped up by grief. Yeah. Lighting wise, oh, I had to ask even like Alicia's opinion on this and Kat, I was like, do we want this? to be like as it is, as I originally drew it, or should I put like a bluish tint on the whole thing? Kat was completely unhelpful. She was like, just do both. <laughs> Why not both? ¿Por qué no las dos? Older paso, hard and soft. Tone. Yeah, so I kind of went with a bit of a in-between. Because I didn't want it to be so contrasty. Super that, dramatic. Yeah, yeah, because then it kind of takes away. You do want that. That's way. true, you're right. We're talking mm. about emotion, not about look at the cool lighting I can do. <laughs> I'm glad that I put a lot of time into figuring out where things were going to sit early on. Mm. Because then I got to a phase where I could just noodle away at it. Just yeah. Put in details. <laughs> We interrupt your mermaid video to bring you more mermaids. Our lovely Patreons. They put up with a lot of stuff from us, including forgetting to mention them in videos sometimes. <laughs> Sorry. And we thought it would be really fun to include you in our mermaid shenanigans. You're part of mermaid now. So we're going to make you all mermaids. If you two want tales drawn on your little characters, uh, it's time to have a look at our Patreon. Link is in the description. Find the link down below. There are several different tiers you can sign up to and our masters get the most love. <laughs> you get all sorts of things. I'm sure you hear us say this every video, but uh, apparently now it also includes mermaid tales. <laughs> if you want to know what patrons get, click the link below and you can see what you get for different monthly subscriptions. It's super fun though. We love all of our patrons and we are um, patrons. And we love everything, all the interaction and stuff we get to do with you guys. So uh, if you're interested in all that, again, head down to the description below um, and we'll see you over there too. Also join our Discord, that's free. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I am going to try something I haven't done since I was five. Do you remember when you were a kid, made bubbles with mm. like, detergent mm -hmm. and then yeah. put paint in it and then put your paper on it. And Is that what you're doing? Yes. I'm going to do that for my background. So I started out not really knowing what emotion I wanted to depict with my mermaid, mm. but I knew I really wanted to have a play with the bubble texture in the background. Yeah. So I started out with that and I was like, oh, I'll just do greens and blues. And once I finished doing that, I was thinking colors first before emotion again. So like while I was mm. trying to work out, like, you know, you needed the opposite on the color wheel. So like these sort of warmer tones. I was having a think about what things are warmer tones. Crabs. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> He's so cranky. <laughs> like one flick of the tail and you yeet. And you just got like this glare on like, what are you going to do about it? <laughs> <laughs> Is her expression related to the crab? Yes. So I was like, what can I do with a crab? And then I was talking to Ariel about how I didn't know quite what emotion I wanted to do yet. And you're oh, like, yeah. just do the emotion you felt about having to do the emotion. <laughs> and I was like, annoyance. <laughs> So that's how I sort of came to what she was doing in her expression and really just wanted to have a lot of fun with colours and textures. I looked over at what you were doing at one point and I was like, I'm going to do the opposite. Yes, <laughs> that's how we roll here. Always like push to the extreme opposite. The exact opposite. <laughs> so yeah, I think uh, I had a lot of fun working with traditional media. What is your top one reason for picking this? I love gouache. Um, so it's like it's acrylic and watercolor had a baby because you can water them right down for them to look like watercolors, mm. but then you can also make them quite thick like acrylics. Yeah. But they then have this like really beautiful flat, like velvety appearance to them, which really lends itself to artwork like this where you sort of try mm. to make things pop. Because I'm impressed by how 
bright, like the neon orange goes, even though you painted that over green, so it yeah. hasn't gotten muddy. That's why I like doing, I don't know if it's actually how you're supposed to do it, but I use them in the sense that I will do lots of washes of transparent colour and then build up to my thicker paint, and the thicker paint being like the highlights and where you sort of want form to be, and yep. like where you want the eye to be drawn to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I and love her little pot belly. <laughs> Look, you know what? Everyone draws mermaids like all skinny and like, I just want somebody with a normal body. <laughs> Realistic. Yes. <laughs> I do like how her gesture is so exaggerated. Like her forearm bones are like curving. Yeah. And her shoulders are she's, way up here. She's from Harry Potter with like the broken arm where it's like, it's just a floppy. <laughs> and then I like the hair next to the tail. The purple versus the orange and one's like flowing out, one's flowing down. Yeah. Mm. Thank you. And all the wispy bits. That final touch that adds that spark. That was so fun. That was like, at, at that point that I was doing that, Alicia walked in to make sure that we were on, on, on track. And I was like, I'm just playing now. <laughs> I'll finish it. <laughs> I also realized once I'd done the background bubbles that I forgot to bring in a hairdryer to actually dry the background before I could like go ahead and add the character to it. Normally I'd use a hairdryer, proper traditionalist would probably just let it dry on its mm. own. This is still wet. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna have to um just go straight in with paint rather than doing a base sketch. I've done like a little sketch so I kind of know what I'm doing on another bit. What emotion are you feeling right now? Anger, frustration. <laughs> Annoyance at myself. How did that work for you? At the start I was like kind of, I feel like I could have done better, but like now that it's finished, I'm actually pretty happy with it. So mm, I feel like it I worked it. okay. Yeah. I actually love things like that because it yeah. sort of challenges me to mm. work differently. Yeah, now you don't have like lines that you had to erase or go over. Yeah, or... exactly. And like, I just, I like the organic way of learning when you're sort of forced to try something new. So now like I have more confidence that I could do this again mm. without having to rely on a pencil outline. Mm. And then like once I started doing the paint like outlines, I realized that I could have just gone into the bathroom and put it under the hand dryer, <laughs> which is what I ended up doing then. I think you should send this in. You reckon? It, it's very much in the spirit. To like the... if you look at the website, yeah. it's very much this kind of like super exaggerated poses. Like how is her tail like <laughs> up above her hair, you know? Like... Yeah. <laughs> Let us know what you think in the comments and if you are doing the mermaid challenge, yeah. let us know. Come join our Discord. Again, that's free. It's just an open community. So we'd love to yeah. see your mermaids. I would also love to see fan art, which you can use oh, the yeah. hashtag insert fan art or at insert art show. And if anyone wants to name the crab, it's going to be a thing. I'm going to try and fit him into other artwork now. It's just, it's like, just yeah, you're sassy crab. <laughs> or if you would like to draw my mermaid family while they were alive. Yeah, the day before when they were all enjoying oh, the day each other's company. Expand the story for us. Uh, See you Ariel, when I get back. Ariel will have a, a break, and then I will have a break. <laughs> I'm going back to my parents' house to look for my childhood artwork because I've been scheduled into part two mm. for that. That's exactly, you're just flying back there for that, yeah. And on that note, <laughs> we'll see you in the next video. Insert out. Insert out. <laughs>